Hello world, and welcome to my classroom. Some of you watching this are former students. Others of you are friends, family, for everybody else who I haven't had the honor and pleasure of meeting in person. It's nice to meet you. Hello, my name is Dylan Daniel Hoffman, and this, again, is my classroom. This is where I've taught mathematics at the high school level for the last eight years. I've had really wonderful relationships with students. I've had a fantastic time. I've done absolutely everything imaginable to help my students learn the required content that state and national standards require that I teach. What I have also done is had conversations with students and parents and family and friends, sometimes at great length, to talk about an issue that is at the depth of my soul, at the depth of my heart, and I know I'm not alone. I know there have to be so many teachers out there, some of which I've talked with at length, who think the same way, parents who think the same way, students who think the same way. So I'm recording this video today to talk about it. And it's this issue, what we teach in high school mathematics. Why the heck do we teach what we teach in high school mathematics? Why, for the last hundred plus years, have we required that kids get through a certain amount of years of algebra and then geometry and then above geometry? Sometimes it's algebra two, sometimes it's trigonometry, sometimes it's statistics and pre-calculus and calculus. Why? Well, it used to be because that math was arguably applicable. Then technology came around and it was, well, a lot of that math is still pretty applicable, but now you've got some tools with the computation. Now, teachers waited a long time to allow calculators to be used. In a lot of places, they still aren't allowed to be used. Well, okay, but that's still the same stuff. That's still algebra, geometry, algebra two, and everything else. I have worked with students for years at a specialized school that especially works with students who are credit deficient who have taken algebra three years in a row and failed all three years, who aren't going to a four-year college. And schools like mine, public schools across the nation, are required the same way to teach the same concepts that the richest, elitist school does. Because it's a requirement. It's a requirement that instead of teaching fun, engaging, useful stuff, like how to budget, how do you know what's really going on in the back of your credit card rate, especially when you're being offered one at 18 years old or younger? About how to play games like chess, that you do so much more mathematical thinking than here's a worksheet on 30 problems of solving systems of equations or of inequalities. Sorry to give some people some uh, flashbacks of those concepts. How about technology in 2019 with concepts like game design, web design, coding, where if you can code, you can get a job right out of high school, easily out of college, paying you much more than I'll earn in a year, and you'll be able to have power of learning how to actually create the social media that you use every day, the apps that you use every day, the technology that you use every day, skills that any modern, not just American, but citizen of the world needs to use and learn. But instead, we don't teach that. Instead, unlike... English, where we've evolved the way we write and type, and social studies to evolve the way we learn with Google Maps and with mock trial and with all of these really cool modern ways, science, the way we do labs, the way we learn about and hypothesize around experiments, mathematics is heavily in need, generationally in need of a reboot. Not just the way that's taught, not just the new math of the 80s or the Socratic method of the 90s or the aughts, not just the flipped classroom with Khan Academy of the even more modern age. We need to do a deep dive on what we teach. Why do we require algebra, geometry, and above? To everyone. Why can't we still offer that, but in addition, for math credit to help you graduate and go to college and go on and do other careers? Why can't we have classes where everyone can get that credit and learn how to code and learn how to program and have fun using conceptual divergent thinking with tasks like playing games, doing puzzles, riddles, being a part of the same mock senate in a math classroom because you're using debate techniques and very complex thinking that goes well beyond the algorithms of memorizing a formula or an equation or a technique to solve a theoretical problem from two centuries ago. So, 
If you're listening to this and you're a former student, I ask you to draw on your experience. If you're a current student, hang in there. But draw on your current experience. If you're a parent, don't just draw on your former experience in school. Draw on your kids' experience in school. And if you're a teacher, draw on every day that a kid has come up to you and with tears in their eyes asks you, when am I ever going to use this? And you had to think, what do I say? Do I lie? Do I sort of tell the truth? Do I be real and say, hey, for most of you, you're probably never going to use this graphing of linear inequalities on a number line. If you're a college professor and you think the system is broken in different ways, we should be teaching different higher level math. Maybe it's graph theory to freshmen. Maybe calculus now with computation could be taught at a younger age in middle school. I mean, all options are on the table and let's consider them all. My point is that I can't keep getting older year after year teaching every single year without knowing that we're making progress on this, without knowing that we're having conversation, without knowing that I'm doing something to try and help this cause. And maybe no one will listen to this video. Maybe it's a teacher in July just shouting into the eternal echo of the internet. But I have to do something before I come back in a month and teach another year to know that I can look my students in the faces and say, I know this is frustrating now. I'm gonna do everything I can to make the current legalized standards as applicable and as doable as possible, but I'm also, in a secondary level, working to help change them. And I don't wanna wait 10 years. We can't wait 20 years, 30 years, 50 years, another 100 years. We need to have this conversation now. We need to have this conversation 100 years ago. So certainly let's do it now. Join with me. Foundations out there, Gates Foundation, Khan Academy, if you have resources, let's get a task force together. I want to help change this because our students cannot wait another year. Let's not have them wait another year. So thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure having you in my classroom. And best wishes in all that you do. I hope with everything in me that this can be a springboard to a conversation where we fix this. And whether it takes one year, five years, 10 years, at least I know we're on the right track. And together, we will make math modern and cool and applicable. And our kids and grandkids will be able to say, hey, I never had a question where I'm going to use this. I knew. Because of course, that was just math. And math was awesome.